Howdy! Welcome to my backyard marsh. Well, I think it's my backyard marsh. I don't think we're in the right spot. Let's go to the right spot. Well, hello there. Did we make it to the marsh yet? I don't think so. Wow, what a rush. Well, I made it to my backyard. Y'all ready to go explore more of it? Ecosystem. It's a wetland. It's an estuary. It's a marsh. And it's all in my backyard. My backyard is literally right next door to the Anahuac Wildlife Refuge. You can actually come here and enjoy all that the marsh has to offer for absolutely free. So what is an ecosystem, you ask? So it makes up all of our living, biotic, and our non-living abiotic, they make up this given area. And if you look around us, there is so much biodiversity around here. There's so much food and habitat and animals that live here that make up this wonderful ecosystem that we live in. So what makes a wetland a wetland? Well, there are three things that make a wetland a wetland. Number one, Hydrology, there's water everywhere, as far as the eye can see, lots of water. Next is the hydrophytic soil. The soil that's beneath me loves to absorb water. And third, the hydrophilic plants. Hydro means water, philic means loves, and these plants love water. How is this a marsh and not a swamp? Well, if you look around as far as the eye can see, all we have here is herbaceous plants. Basically, these plant stems are green. Versus a swamp, if you was to see a swamp, all it would have is trees. And when you look around, I don't really see any trees, do you? It's all grass as far as the eye can see. So, both are wetlands and they both serve amazing purposes. So we need to go explore what those purposes are. Are y'all ready? Let's go. So one of the first purposes I'm gonna talk about, about the marsh, is how it filters pollution. We have so much pollution coming from like pet waste and sewer systems and highways and things like that. Well, it all has to go somewhere and it goes into our watershed and it eventually will end up into our marshes and they work like the kidneys of Mother Earth and they filter it. So the water basically slows down through the vegetation and it filters it through the vegetation. The soil will also filter the water to make it cleaner for us to drink. And the bacteria in the soil will also do something called nitrogen fixation, where it takes all the extra nitrogen and makes it something usable that the plants can use. Which leads us to our next purpose. Since the marsh is really good at filtering our water, it's also really good at replenishing our water. The water absorbs down into the ground and is stored inside of these reservoirs underground. And that's where your drinking water comes from. There's only a certain amount of drinking water on Earth, so it is up to you to take care of our water and not pollute it. So another purpose of the marsh is flood control. We average like 50 inches of rain here a year. And if you look around the bottom of these plants, there's actually standing water and it's like this all year long. And this hydrophytic soil is what absorbs this water like a sponge. And so when we have huge tropical storms, like we had Harvey and Imelda, this soil acts really good at absorbing it. 
with Hurricane Harvey and Tropical Storm Imelda, both storms brought so much water that the water rose so fast, all the roads were impassable. We were getting around in airboats. In fact, I had to use an airboat just to get to my house. But if you think about it, all of this water has to go somewhere. So usually it drains through our wetlands and our marshes. Thank goodness they are there. I bet you're wondering why I'm sitting on top of a barge in the middle of the field with no water. Well, that leads me to my next purpose. A marsh is a great buffer zone for storm surges. So during Hurricane Ike, it brought a 22 foot storm surge through here. And that storm surge is what brought this barge here and actually left it sitting in my backyard. So one purpose of the marsh is erosion control. As you can see, this bank is starting to erode away, but all of these grasses and things like this have deep roots and these deep roots will crisscross and hopefully help prevent the erosion from going any further. So another purpose of the marsh is that plants in the marsh take in a lot of carbon. If you think about it, a plant does photosynthesis. And for photosynthesis, it needs water, and it takes in carbon dioxide, and then it also releases oxygen. So take a deep breath and breathe in that oxygen and enjoy the fact that the marsh can store a lot of carbon. And one of my favorite parts of the marsh is recreation, of course. Like going fishing or taking a kayak trip. So one of the great purposes of marshes is it provides a habitat or a home to many animals. And we have many animals out here and you probably can hear some of the birds chirping behind me, but we have a lot of alligators and crabs and shrimps and of course humans that call this place home. So you can see that our marsh is a very valuable ecosystem and serves many, many purposes. So let's review some of those purposes we've learned today. It filters out our pollution. It absorbs a lot, a lot of water. It stores carbon. It replenishes our drinking water, helps with the erosion control, and provides an amazing habitat to many animals, and of course provides recreation purposes. So I hope you enjoyed what we've learned today and enjoyed exploring the marsh with us today. Hopefully you'll stay curious and come explore some more.